All right, today our video is going to be about how to maintain your breeder bins and how to set up a new one. So we have breeder bins that are on this wall um, over here behind Tabitha. We have 48 breeder bins there. And then we have about, I don't know, seven or eight on this shelf here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sift these and reset them, get our co cocoons out of them, and set our cocoons. So with no further ado, let's get started. So Tapta's gonna first get her first breeder bin that she's gonna work. In that breeder bin, we have a, a paper that we keep track of when we set it, when we need to um, harvest it again, which is every 21 days we do this, um, give or take. Sometimes it's 22, 23, but we try to be consistent in doing it in 21 days. So she's gonna mark on her paper that she harvested today with today's date and that it would need to be reharvested on March the 4th. And she's just gonna put that aside. I'm gonna turn the sifter on. It'll be a little bit of noise, but it shouldn't be too loud. Now she's just gonna take and scoop in her breeder along with all the material. Get any big clumps of material out of there that she might have. We have our bins set up under it to catch our cocoons and castings that fall through. And then out the other end is gonna come your breeder worms. And what we do is we go ahead on the end that's catching the breeder worms, we go ahead and have a tray set up that has um, 50-50 uh, manure and 50-50 royal. And that's what we have in this bin over here. Uh, royal is basically the same thing as pit moss, um, but we get that from Cousins Compost. We mix it 50-50 and we get it good and moist. And um, we put about, about a little less than half the pan in the, uh, in the new breeder bin. And then as the worms come down, they're already in the new bedding. That moisture, you want it to be about 80 to 90%. We run our beds fairly wet. We don't want standing water, but you want you know three or four drops of water to come out in a good squeeze. Now the, the bed that she's harvesting right now, we quit watering about a week ago so they could dry out in order for the cocoons to not mat up and fall through the, uh, the sifter. You, you really need to, you'll find out if you put wet bedding in a sifter, it's just gonna clog up, ball up, and it's just gonna be a mess. Your worms will stick to the ends. It's, it's just a horrific mess. I'm gonna bring you down here so you can see the worms coming out the end. We put 500 worms to a bin, and um, yes, we do hand count those. All right, she's turned the machine off. I wanted y'all to see the worms, and down there, there just wasn't enough light to really see. But this is our 500 breeder worms. 
and um, we just put those right back in that bedding. All right, so um, we've got the breeders in their bin in their new home. Now she's going to take a new, uh, not a new, but she's going to take the paper and put back on it. And she's going to go place that back on the rack. Now our rack over here does have uh, Vivasun um, heat mats on them. We try to keep these in ideal conditions so that we can uh, maintain a good hatch and um, get what we can uh, a good hatch rate. Now she's taking these and um, taking all the, the pans and putting them together because all of our uh, cocoons and overs, little pieces that fall through the castings all fall down into those pans. So we want to cast catch all those cocoons that we possibly can just in case there's any that's uh, still in the pan. She's going to brush that out. All right, now that she's got that all brushed out, she's going to get reset up. And at the same time, she's going to moisten those uh, cocoons. Um, in order to put them on the rack um, and set those up for 21 days. Again, we're doing this today, so March the uh, 20, let's see, Mar not March the 23rd, March the 4th, I think it is, would be the day that they should start hatching out roughly around that time. We're also going to make our moisture in these about uh, 80 to 90 percent. You just don't want standing water. Um, we will come back and um, put a half of a apple in these. It just helps to draw the worms out to have some food. Um, once they start hatching, then we'll add uh, some more manure in the bedding and at this point we don't split these um we wait until the worms start hatching once the worms start hatching we'll split these up into about four pans and then as they grow we'll split them again to, to where we have about a total of eight or nine pans and that just gives them room to grow now we're growing these to fill up our uh worm beds that we have in the new warehouse and they're 27 by 67 and 27 by 77. So <clears throat> we're trying to make these ideal conditions to get these going at a faster pace. She's gonna put her paper on there and then she's gonna bring them over here and put them on, on our rack that holds our cocoons. This is the rack that we set them on here. These are not on a heat mat. Um, eventually we hope to have uh, more heat mats but at the moment we don't um, but here in Georgia it's starting to warm up so hopefully it won't be long we'll we'll be in spring and now what she's doing is we're just gonna do the whole process all over again so just to show you again what our our bedding is, it's about 50-50 manure and uh, royal, which is the same as pit moss. Um, and to show you what that looks like, it's basically just ground up newsprint and it has a little bit of um, some type of bark in it. Um, but what I really like about this is it holds moisture and with these um, heat mats, they pull a lot of moisture out. So this helps to hold in some of that moisture so they don't dry out as fast. And also, it really helps with um, being able to see your worms. But basically now she's just setting up another bin and uh, 
getting ready to sift these. And like I said, there's 500 in this bin. These we let go uh, about 24, 25 days. So I already see some babies hatching out in there. But they'll fall in through the screens and and we'll just fill them on out with getting them grown out and getting them bigger. But that's it for today, y'all. Um, it's just that simple. You just have to stay on top of it, be organized with it, keep good records. Um, and if you can keep your temperatures ideal, you can really get some good cocoons. Now, we haven't counted the cocoons in these today um, simply because we're pressed for time. But on our paper that we put in with our cocoons, we put in what bin that came out of so that when we have time to go back and count the cocoons, we can see what our ratio that we're getting out of our uh, breeder bins. That will help us determine if we're doing it right or if we're uh, not doing it, you know, as well as it should be. Because if we're not getting the right amount of cocoons, and then, you know, we figure we should be getting roughly about 2,000 cocoons uh, per 21 days. Um, so that's it for today. You guys have a wonderful week.